Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, for days now, we've been talking about since October 7th, this powder keg that's about to blow even more in the Middle East is leading to the fulfillment of several biblical prophecies. But one prophecy a lot of people are not talking about that is staring us in the face right now, and actually I believe it's a prophecy that's going to lead to the fulfillment of the other biblical prophecies that we've been talking about, is found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, the prophecy against Elam. Before we dive into why I believe this prophecy is about to be fulfilled, I want to share with you three recent stories that just broke and we're going to talk about it, and then we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 49, the prophecy against Elam. This is recently in from All Israel News, recent article titled, Preemptive Strike, Will Israel Choose This Moment to Attack Iran's Nuclear Facilities and Assassinate Its Leaders? Let me read some of this to you guys. On Tuesday, a spokesman for the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, said something to which more people should pay attention. Listen to what he said, folks. We are preparing for the next stages of war. Lieutenant Richard Height told reporters, we haven't said what they will be. Everybody is talking about uh, the ground offensive. That's what we've been talking about, how a ground inv uh, invasion is imminent. It's coming next. But look at, again, listen to what he said. We haven't said what they will be. Everybody is talking about the ground offensive. It might be something different. To what might he be referring, folks? I believe the most likely scenario is that Netanyahu and his war cabinet are actively considering launching a massive preemptive strike on Iran. Which brings me to what I want to share with you guys next that just came out. I found this on War News 24-7. Uh, Fox News was actually talking about this uh, just the other day. But look at the title of this article. Fox News, Israel will consider the Samson option if its existence is threatened. You might be saying right now, well, Chad, what in the world is the Samson option? Well, Israel has a military technique called the Samson option. As Samson of the Old Testament found himself in a hopeless situation, he decided to kill as much of the enemy as possible before his demise. I believe they will launch their Samson option and preemptively strike Iran. We know Iran is on the verge of a nuclear bomb if they already don't have possession of one. Because of which, Netanyahu is going to preemptively strike on Iran's facilities, most likely the Bashir nuclear power plant, which will bring about the fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 49, the prophecy against Elam. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49. We're going to read verses 34 to 39. The word of the Lord that came unto Jeremiah, the prophet against Elam, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam, the chief of their might. And upon Elam, I will bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven and will scatter them toward all those winds. And there shall be no nation whither the outcasts of Elam shall not come. For I will cause Elam to be dismayed before their enemies and before them that seek their life. And I will bring evil upon them, even my fierce anger, saith the Lord. And I will send the sword after them till I have consumed them. And I will set my throne in Elam and will destroy from thence the king and the princes, saith the Lord. But it shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring again the captivity of Elam, saith the Lord. In this prophecy, Jeremiah predicts that Iran will suffer the fate of a broken bow, which might imply that the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, the IRGC, will be unable to launch scores of missiles at its enemies. Additionally, he declares that Iran will be struck at the foremost place of its might, which today could infer an attack on its nuclear program. 
One of Iran's most strategic and vulnerable nuclear targets is the Bashir nuclear reactor located in the heart of ancient Elam. You can see right on the screen here the map of Iran, and you can see ancient Elam right here, and then you have the Bashir nuclear power plant right there. In this prophecy, very clearly, Iran has fiercely angered the Lord, and that provokes the Lord to cause a severe disaster inside of Iran. Perhaps this alludes to a strike upon Iran's Bashir nuclear reactor. Another reason, folks, I believe we're about to see this prophecy fulfilled here in the very near future is I just came across this as well from War News 24-7. Look at the title of this article. Iran opened silos, dozens of ballistic missiles ready to launch. Israel's submarine fleet with nuclear missiles sailed. And then look at this just in on Twitter. Iranian strategic class ballistic missile launchers on the move. Tehran Qom Highway. This is quite unusual. This class of missile is seldom seen publicly outside of exhibitions and parades. Contingencies being planned for. I mean, folks, we see Iran is making a lot of movement. They're getting ready. And we see Israel is considering the Samson option, a preemptive strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. More specifically, the Bashir nuclear power plant. And when that happens, folks, when they strike that, you're going to see Jeremiah chapter 49, the prophecy against Elam, fulfilled. And make no mistake about it, once Israel takes out Iran's nuclear facilities and the Bashir nuclear power plant, all right, you're going to see Iran have its proxies, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, Hamas, others, uh, the Houthis in Yemen, which have been firing at Israel too. You're going to see them all attack Israel at that point. We're going to see the prophecy against Damascus most likely fulfilled after that. So this first domino, as I call it, the Jeremiah 49 prophecy, the prophecy against Elam, is staring us in the face right now. And once we see that domino uh, tip over, if we're still here, unless the rapture happens first, we're watching every day on this channel, you're going to see the other dominoes start to tip over very fast. What amazing times we live in, folks. Let's keep watching because we are living in amazing times. All I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with them forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places. You will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, 
You will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me and God bless you all.